The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the August 12th, the fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in. We'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email, and I'll send that to Steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tigers, then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show right now. Slightly mixed bag out there. That mix coming from the trannies. That's the only indice trading. The downside is off less than one-tenth percent. It's off 13 points. We'll call that basically flat. The NASDAQ, 100, is up 127 points, 1 percent. The Dow is up four-tenths, or 123 points. And S&P up seven-tenths. That's 27 points to the upside. Russell's up nine-tenths, or 17. Semis are up nearly 2 percent. That's 56 points to the upside. Gold's up $2. Silver's up 12 pennies. Lights we crew back to 20. Natural gas off nine cents. The 30-year Treasury is up 10 ticks. Lead the charge dollar-wise. The upside, Mercado Libre up 35 bucks, a little over 3 percent. Tesla's up 19. That's 2%. Lamb Research up 14, 3%. BlackRock up about 13 bucks, nearly 2%. Uh, Generac Holdings up 4%, or $11.50. To the downside, the Shakers are Illumina off 21 bucks, 9%. CS Disco, not much of a disco, down 53% out there. Inspire is not Inspire Medical Systems, not inspiring a whole lot of buyers out here. It's off uh, 10 bucks, or 4%. Treasure Global Inc. Doesn't sound like much treasure there, down 52%. That's off nine buck runes and silver uh, service now off four bucks. That's down nine ten. So we got some movers and we've got some shakers. But let's go take a look what the markets are doing. Let's go switch over and take a look at our daily time frame charts out here for the uh, equity future contracts. We begin in the upper left hand corner. You'll see the ES mini. So even though you don't see the A to B equals CD pattern that is in there, you know that it's present and you can visually see it. Yesterday, a yeah, nice little bearish shooting star candle. That is a confirmed sell the D point. In order to negate that, price is going to have to close above that high. That high, by the way, whoops, sorry about that. That high is 42.60.50. If you get a close above that, that gets uh, negated, says we continue to move higher. If it doesn't get negated, well, then it still opens the door because you have a valid sell the D point, a price pulling back to test that green oscillator and change line that's currently printed at 41.52. The NQ, same pattern. Yesterday, a bearish shooting star. Now, the slight difference regard with, with regard to the NQ's pattern is price closed back below or still remained below, never did close above the top of that daily profile. So that's the first resistance level that needs to be cleared for it. If price closes above that, that, by the way, is 13.40. 13, 419 and a quarter, we're trading above that right now, then it'll have to deal with its next resistance level, and that is yesterday's high. And that's at 13, 575, even Stephen. You close above that, the NQ says it wants to continue to motor higher. Now, both, when you take a look at the daily charts here, ESNQ, YM, Russell 2000, 
you can see how that oscillator and change line has held every time price has tested that since the early part of June, June 23rd, to be specific for the ES Mini out there. So as long as price pulls back and tests and holds that, then the momentum to the upside will continue. If price closes below that, then we've got something else, or at least it tells us the momentum has waned, and we would look at other support levels for those uh, contracts. Right now, it is the oscillator and change line. In the case of the Dow, yesterday was not a bearish reversal candle. It was a doji. Says the market's kind of tired out there. That's really all that it means. And so you've got no topping pattern in the Dow Equity Future contract. It's suggesting it wants higher price. The Russell 2000 having a nice day today. It's up all nearly 1%. But it needs to overtake yesterday's bearish shooting star to truly be on its merry way. So that resistance level is yesterday's high. I'll give that uh, value to you momentarily. The level that price needs to close above is 2870 now, price, again, does not close above that. For those three, that pattern, the sell the D point pattern, remains in effect. And as long as that rain remains in effect, well, we can easily see price pulling back and at least testing those oscillator unchanged line levels out there. Now, if we go take a look at the ES Mini, looking for some additional clues out here. We'll look at the uh, daily and then the intraday charts out here. So we don't need to cover the daily. We've already taken a look at that. The five-hour chart does have a confirmed roads momentum indicator top. That says price has to close above the yesterday's high because that's where that pattern formed at. So if you do get a close, so if you don't get a close above that, it just says caution come Sunday night, Monday or what have you. You've got a nice TD nine count top and roads momentum indicator top for the four hour time frame chart. For that two hour time frame chart, I've got to believe there's a A to B equals CD pattern. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of them. So the bearish reversal candle, that set up a top. So you've got topping patterns here on the top line for the daily, the five hour, the four hour and the two hour time frame chart. If you look at a 60-minute chart out here, well, you've got a nice roads momentum indicator top. Again, the high from yesterday. If I look at a 30-minute time frame chart, we do not have a topping pattern. In fact, we did have a, well, I say we do not. That depends on where price closes at 11.30. It's 11.12 right now. If price closes above bar number 8 of 18.9 count, that's the one that formed at about 5 o'clock this morning, that high is 42.37.50. We're at 42.40 right now. A close about 42.37.50 says we go back to yesterday's highs, which on a 30-minute chart was both a TD9 count top and a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. So you can see we've got all these tops out here for the S&P, the ES Mini, that is for all of these intraday time periods out there. And that makes yesterday's high the real key level. And again, if you get a close above that, boy, it's a real signal of a strong momentum move in the market. Now, I had mentioned that the Dow does not have a topping pattern. So where is the Dow headed to? You know, to answer that question, we're going to switch over and take a look at a different set of charts out here. For this, we'll go take a look at our, um, oh, by the way, we talked about this yesterday. Uh, we are at a new all-time high for the Dow, priced in pounds, priced in euros. Both in pounds and euros took out their January 4th, 2022 highs out there. Longer term, this is an absolute indication that the Dow will take out its all-time high. When significant tops are formed in a market, those tops will form in all major currencies at or about the exact same time. And I'm talking about within days out there. We're not talking about this was the January 4th top. And it's, you know, so so that's what this chart has done. Now, where is the Dow headed to? The Dow in dollars, that is. If we take a look at our primary trading range. We're getting pretty close. If you take a look at the daily time frame, price running into a descending trend line or channel line. If you take a look at the weekly chart, that's a center panel. That says we've got a little bit higher to go out there. And that could take us into the 34,152 mark. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this 
combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so let's get to some of the questions. Uh, some of these are questions that came in yesterday. In fact, most of them are uh, that we just didn't get uh, didn't get a chance to get to. So the first question I've got coming from HD. We want to take a look at Pan American Silver, PAAS is the ticker symbol out there, as well as Newmont Mining. So yesterday, Pan American Silver took a trip to the downside with volume out there, substantial volume. So I don't know what's behind that move. I haven't had a chance to investigate the fundamental aspect, but volume was 11.6 million shares to the downside out there. Now, price is also trading into this hammer candle, this Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom out there. Now, that candle, that hammer candle, that was from the trading day of uh, July 14th, only 3.3 million shares. But price was unable to bust out those lows. So what you need to see here today, HD, whether it's today or it's tomorrow, what have you, in order to reject that swing point, you need to see a close above 1833. Well, less than 3.3 million shares out there. Now, there is a new profile that has formed, and support is at 18.02, and we're trading at 18.20 uh, right now. now. That's a profile that formed yesterday. So we've got profile support that is held, a big volume to the downside. I don't know what your question was. I apologize because I just wrote the ticker symbols in who asked about them. Um, if you were looking to buy this, you know, I'd look at probably other mining issues out there or maybe just consider going along the silver contract out here you know don't like what pan american silver did on the other hand you've got a new profile that is held and if you get a rejection at uh, hammer candle swing point and you're in this trade you may get right back up to the uh, 2158 level but you've got some resistance with regard to that new swing point which is at 1957 and then 2113 out there so hd thanks for waiting on pan american silver let's go take a look at newmont mining nem is the ticker symbol there it'll take just a few moments for this to populate which is what we need to do so we can see the patterns that are in here now newmont mining did not pull back with volume like uh, Pan American Silver did. And we can see in Newmont Mining's case, it does have a confirmed Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. It did that on the trading day of, well, it generated that signal on August 14th. We had a nice bull sash candle that confirmed the pattern out there. It then had a nice little hammer candle at the bottom of its bullish structured 
daily profile, and that was on August 9th. Right now, you've got prices consolidating within it. So if you're looking to get into Newmont Mining, we do like this stock chart better. We like it for a couple of reasons. On a weekly basis, you're going to get a confirmed TD9 count bottom. Now, I believe Newmont Mining is the number one weighted instrument inside the GDX. So you're getting a nice uh, signal here, both on the daily time frame and on the weekly time frame. The monthly time frame, not so much out there. But this suggests, in the case of Newmont Mining, uh, that over time, price should go target its weekly oscillator and change on at 56.34. Now, we can't say that that's going to occur until price closes above the top of the daily profile HD, and that level is 46.94 out there. So I would prefer, if you're choosing one or the other, go with Newmont Mining out there. The pref preference would be uh, buying this between the 44.51 to 45.12 level out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to those two instruments. Uh, LB wanted to take a look at URA. So let's get that up on our screen out there. Uh, LB it remains long. I can't recall if we got to this yesterday. I don't think that we did. Uh, so as we take a look at URA for the daily time frame, all the price is doing here, LB, is taking on resistance. That's the TD9 count breakdown resistance level. Uh, thank you, G-Man. So Pass had very bad earnings. Yeah, they most certainly did, and they had a lot of volume that came out of that. But uh, 2208, back to uranium out here, is the key level of resistance. Now, right now, price is trading with inside its daily profile, so the top of that profile is at the 2167 level. But even if you can clear that, 2208, which was tested yesterday, um, and you actually got to sell the D-point pattern now that I take a look at uranium. So you had that nice, uh, I don't know if it's so nice or long, but you had that nice... Uh, bearish shooting star candle and that confirmed an a to b equals cd pattern but price remains above its green oscillator and change line but below the top of the daily profile out there so it's um, it's it's not completely neutral but it's not exactly completely bearish out there we change our opinion if price blows below 2039 out there so anything else that i see i don't so if price can take out yesterday's high then you're up up and away and that up up and away would be 2442 next and then above that 3016 so, LB, thanks so much for being kind and waiting a full day uh, for that. Uh, Hector and Patty had written in, and they want to take a look at ConocoPhillips. COP is the ticker symbol there. So let's go uh, get that up on our screen, see what COP is uh, trading at. And it got 101.16 out here. Now, what you've got is an A to B equals CD pattern. So you had a TD9 count top that failed yesterday. I was bar following bar number nine. So that suggests a run towards the 119.64 level. That's a CD9 call. This is the daily time frame. What is the weekly time frame chart sells? And then we'll go look at the A to B equals CD pattern. Well, the weekly time frame chart, price is dealing with resistance. It's right at, at resistance, 101.19. We're trading at 101.09. So what you'd like to see, Patty and Hector, is certainly a close this week above 101.19 out there. Then you'd be above a weekly green offset and change line above the top of its weekly profile. And that says we had higher. That had higher would be 112.48. 112.48 is the top of the monthly profile. Now, let's go switch back to our other set of charts out there because we can easily draw in the A to B equals CD pattern. We can also go ahead and see if the B point was passed on volume. So let's clean this uh, daily chart up here. Let's clean up the weekly chart. Try to clean it up. There we go. Okay. So now let's take a look at the A to B equals CD. But first, let's draw this pattern in because it's, it's, it's an A to B equals CD pattern, whether its B point was passed with volume or not out there. But the volume on the trading session of July 29th was 7.3 million shares. Yesterday, 6.4 million shares. Today, 2 million shares in the first two hours of trading out there. So you got two, you got about 6 million shares or so. Uh, it still looks like you're going to be light in the loafers. Does not matter. You have an A to B equals CD pattern on the upside. The price projection level is 107.62. That is more likely to come to fruition if price can close above the 101.19 level. And again, that is both the top of the weekly profile as well as its weekly oscillator unchanged line. So, Hector and Patty, I hope that helps you out with regard to Conoco Phillips out there. Uh, Joe wrote in, and he wanted to take a look at SQQQ. Now, of course, uh, everybody knows that, that what I would do with regard to taking a look at the uh, a triple, like the SQQQ or the TQQQ, would be to go take a look at, uh, well, for me, it would be the equity future contract to look for signals out there. And we will do that. Um, it might be after the break. But the question that came in was, so this is the short. For the XQ, and I believe the question was, will this get to 39 or 29? Yeah, 
I wish I could remember, and it's on my laptop, which I can't get over to that easily and see. So let me just take a look at the SQQ. What, what kind of signal do we have? Well, I guess similar to the uh, NQ yesterday, which formed a sell the D point pattern because it had that bearish shooting star. SQQQ formed a buy the D point pattern. It also uh, looks like it's going to form wave number seven, that's letter G. Part of the Chapman wave, a small, very small part of the Chapman wave out there. So what this is telling you, Joe, is that price should go target its oscillator and change line. And that would be at 36.99. If price can close above that, then the next price target would be 39.71. If price cannot close above that, it's telling you you're really in the wrong position out here. And that would be being short the NASDAQ 100. So we are about to head to a break. What I will do during that break is I'll pull up the NQ charts. Remember, we looked at the ES Mini. We saw all those short-term topping patterns and signals out there. Let's go see if the NQs have the same set of patterns. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, up, folks. We got the Dow up 192, S&P 36, the Nasdaq 161, Russell's up 25. Tradings are still the one that are uh, down off uh, 15 points. That's uh, less than 1% or about 1%, one-tenth of a percent, I should say, to the downside. So let's go back now and uh, take a look at the NQ. Sort of a little bit of a follow-up to the SQQ question from uh, Joe out there. Uh, wow, that's weird. What just happened with that chart? What? I, I guess I accidentally... Uh, went ahead and uh, deleted the 120-minute time frame chart. Well, that's that's a mistake for sure. That's okay. Stevie can resolve that issue. Put a new one in there. All right. So back to the NQ. 
Yesterday, again, you have that sell the D point pattern because of the bearish shooting star from the daily time frame. That says yesterday's high is critical. That high again, 13,575. It closes above that, negates that pattern, says we had higher. We take a look at the five hour time frame chart, really the same pattern, the same signal, uh, both a sell the D point and a Rhodes Mintum indicator top out there. The uh, 240 minute chart had a sell the D point pattern that's the same place. I believe the 120 minute chart did as well. So now we come back here. The 30 minute time frame chart, let's expand this one out. I'll try to not delete it. So at the at its high yesterday was a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Price pulls uh, back. I don't have a reason for it to have found support where it did on the 30-minute time frame chart out here, uh, but it did. You had a TD nine count pattern that uh, failed. Uh, it was bar number the bar following bar number nine that was the high, and it failed immediately after that. It tells us about a strong momentum to move to the upside. You have another TD nine count pattern that may form. I say may form. We are now in bar number eight. Bar number eight will complete at noon. Bar number nine at 12:30. The bar following nine at one. So you may, on a short-term basis, a 30-minute chart, get a TD nine count topping pattern by, uh, did I say one o'clock? Yeah, I think it was one o'clock uh, out there. So you wanna watch that. Now, the bar that we're in, in order for that to even come to fruition, we have to take out the current high. Uh, that current high is one that was just established in that last 30-minute period. That's at 13, 483.50. So I just jot that down on a pad of paper. If you get a close above 13, 483.50 between now and one o'clock, odds favor. It doesn't guarantee it really have to come back. Make sure bar eight followed the rules, bar nine followed the rules out there. But it does look like that is a potential out here. We also have wave number seven, that's letter G that is in place out here. So it does look like we should see around one o'clock. That's when Larry uh, will start the show. We should see at least the NQ is signaling that uh, we might get some type of short term top right around that uh, time period. Again, the pattern itself has to complete, and we are not there just yet. So that's what's going on there. Let's go to, we've got a couple more questions that have come in, so I don't want to get behind on uh, those. And the uh, first one coming in from, let's get over these charts here, from, um, from Nick. And Nick was asking about UVXY. So Nick, I think that the uh, best way for you to consider trading UVXY, well first, Really, if you want to trade it, you should go to like two or three minute charts. I'll, I'll pull that up. We'll do that. We'll set that up. We'll take a look at that on my other screen out there and take a look at Taz Market Profiles. But in lieu of that, let's assume that you don't have those out there. Uh, what I would be doing is I'd be paying attention to the oscillator and change line. And that means if you take a look at it, it has acted as resistance ever since uh, June 22nd out here. June 20, yeah, June 22nd. Price has not been able to close above that. So I wouldn't really consider a UVXY until you saw a close above that level. Now, that level right now is 940. Price is trading at 890 out here. So that's how I would consider the UVXY. Now, I had mentioned, let's do a, see if I can get this here done. I can. We're going to go change pages. Yeah, I'm going to go change pages to a black screen. You'll just see me set this chart up here. And uh, I guess that's the black screen right there. Let's actually get a chart. And then uh, let's populate this with UVXY. Let's go ahead and change this to like a uh, three minute chart. Well, let's go to the actual wheel. Let's go to a three minute chart out here. And now what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and add the uh, TAS market profile. So if you give me a moment, we'll insert that uh, study. We'll add it. Um, formulas, get down to my TAS stuff. And we'll just put in the uh, boxes here. There we go. So that should populate. Okay, so there you go. So now now we're on a three minute time frame chart out here. And and really UVXY is, is really quite a um, you know an intraday type of a, a charting signal. Now I just I just I hadn't looked at this ahead of time. I just I just recall because we've had a number of uh, of the denners out there, listeners out there that have wanted to trade this and from time to time we've come back and taken a look at a two and three minute chart with these profiles and said this quite frankly is the way to trade it. What I want you to take a look at, uh, the reason why you would not be long UVXY, and again, just on a three minute base, so this is taking us back to uh, 2.54 yesterday afternoon out here. And since that time period, price has not been able to close above the top of a three minute profile. It actually did slightly at 10.39 uh, this morning out there, but you know, we've got Stevie's two bar rule out there. So this on just a three minute chart, 
would have kept you out of going into a long position. So now this is for the real intraday traders uh, that are out there. You know, you're trying to catch a momentum type move out there. I'll just put up the two minute time frame chart out here to see if that uh, shows us anything different. And sometimes, uh, you know, you want to go through these different, if you, if you do have this tool, you want to go through and try to find the time frame that is providing you the best results out here. And actually, the three-minute looks to me to be better than the uh, uh, two-minute. Just curious, what's the four-minute chart uh, look like out there? Then we'll simply move away. Four-minute chart uh, looks very similar with price being unable to close above the top of a uh, profile. So this is pretty cool. So we're talking about 1 o'clock or so. We could get a TD9 count top for the 30-minute NQ. I don't know if the ES has that same pattern out there, but this is how you could kind of put it all together there. So uh, if you really want to trade the UBXY, uh, I'd say go out and get the uh, the TAS profiles, you know, and, uh, and and try that. I think that will help you out a ton. So, Nick, I hope that helps you out with regard to UVXY. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in and have a uh, have a fantastic weekend. The next question coming in from uh, G Man inside the Tigers Den. G Man wants to take a look at Roblox R B L X out here. So let's get that up on our uh, screen. Let's actually change screens. That would be good. Uh, if you give me a moment, we'll get that uh, done here. Roblox straight out of 5027. Looks like it's above the top of its daily profile out there. So here we've got, uh, so what do we have yesterday? Big old shooting star. Uh, looks like the completion of an A to B equals CD pattern out here. Let's just draw on the one that shows up on my screen. Here's A to B. Uh, if we take that over to the, to the uh, C point out here, did it complete the one-to-one -one level? Or is that still open? No, it really didn't complete that one. If we go back further inside here, Roblox. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's questionable whether it completed the A to B equals CD pattern out there. So we're going to say it didn't at this stage. Um, but you do have a shooting star. Oh, you do have wave number seven, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There you go. So it looks like you do have a wave seven top, but price is tested and reject that green oscillator and change line. You're above the top of the daily profile, G-Man. I mean, if you're long this position, I'm not going to tell you to close it. I'm going to say just be cautious out there. Uh, oh, it actually has a TD9 count top. There we go. So that TD9 count top, that's what formed on August the 8th out there. And that price pulled right back to support the bottom of its bull structured profile. That held. So the work is really uh, done out here. Now, the TD9 count top gets negated with a close above 5090. You're at 5037. So again, I don't see a reason to jettison this position out here. I do see a reason to be cautious. The weekly time frame chart is going to form bar number eight of a TD9 count. But bar number nine has to complete. Now, it doesn't have to be a higher high. Bar eight is the high at this stage. Bar number nine just simply has to close above the close of bar number five next week in order to generate that uh, uh, TD9 count top out there. But short of that, um, you know, things look pretty decent inside of Roblox. So all that I would do would be maybe tighten up my uh, stop out there um, because of that TD9 count. But if it does fail, uh, that would be a beautiful thing. I believe that, you know, if you're long Roblox, and that would suggest we had higher. But you've got to be cautious come next week. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We'll take a look at the UNG for Alton. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with a 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. A prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We got the charts for the UNG. That's the ETF that uh, tracks um, uh, natural gas. Uh, you want to go take a look always if you're trading UNG. You want to go take a look at what the holdings are. It's likely the uh, front month and in the following months. So that would be September and October. We'll roll to October uh, next week inside the natural gas contract out here. So we'll be in by take a look at the UNG. But really what we're going to do for Alton is go take a look at the natural gas contract. Odds favor that we're going to see different pieces of information. Again, it's likely September and October's contract that uh, we're trading inside the UNG. What the UNG tells us, shows us, well, a couple of things. One, right now, price is consolidating often with inside its daily profile. That is between the range of 27 and a quarter to $30.81 out there. So that says you close about 38.1, you get back to its previous highs. Now, we can see that price uh, back in the, uh, a few weeks ago, July 26, had made a run for that high basically a 100% move of move. That's the high from back on uh, June the 8th. And then the retracement has been relatively shallow. So you actually could be getting inside of UNG, perhaps inside of natural gas, a gigantic A to B equals CD to the upside. I mean, we're talking about the kind that could take us to 12, 13 bucks out there or so. Uh, so now let's go take a look at natural gas. Let's do that a couple different ways. One, I'm going to to go to the uh, black background uh, screens out here. And here you will see daily, weekly, um, monthly and the uh, quarterly uh, time frame charts out there. And I happen to have this all for the uh, September contract, which is kind of unusual. So where natural gas is likely headed to, Alton, is that descending trend line. That descending trend line should get us into about the $9.36 area. If we take a look at the top of the monthly profile, that's at 9 59. So I'd say the range to the upside is going to be that 936 to 959-ish type area out there. So if you're long UNG, I would uh, stay with the uh, trade out there. I don't have any reason to suggest otherwise. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for the request. Let's go out to Brent in Martinez, California. Hey, Brent, how you doing today? I'm oh, doing great, Steve. I can actually say good morning, and it's legitimate now. Yes, absolutely. I love it. I love it. Um, oh, yeah. I, I'm doing great. Uh, what do you have planned for the weekend? Oh, my! Both my sons are coming home this weekend. Sounds they like have, some uh, I guess a friend of theirs that it's actually my younger son uh, is in his uh, grade, same grade in uh, high school, and on the water polo team. And just friends they've had for a while is going to be going over to Europe, so they're coming down to oh, cool. kind of going away party. Now, does your son get the uh, water polo from a uh, sport that you played? Well, I've my wife and I had met way back in you know 1984. Uh, I was a lifeguard, and she was a lifeguard, so that's how we met. I just we both were swimmers, and oh, yeah, cool. I was in the water sports, water skiing, surfing, all those kind of things. Just being in California, so yeah, 
Um, oh, I got them, cool. taught them to swim young. My Troy was two when he learned, and Shane was five, I guess. So, yeah, they've been you know, on the live- water pretty young. So, and then that, yeah, just kind of went from swim team to uh, transition into that sport, water polo. <laughs> Yeah, I got to believe uh, that uh, that builds up a pretty strong core. I would think, having to uh, yeah. you know <laughs> swim like that. So with the water polo, that is. So, but yeah, my cool. youngest son, he did like all the difficult. He was into wrestling and then water polo, <laughs> and you know just the ones that take a lot of endurance and pretty pretty difficult sports. You, you got to get to do one of those extreme shows on TV, those ninja things, or whatever, where they fly from. Yeah, American one Ninja trapeze. Warrior. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 that was on my my uh, my mother in law actually likes to watch that. She's ninety four years old and she likes to watch that. So uh, she was with us for a while, and uh, yeah, and so it was on. I was I sitting down watching it with her. Pretty amazing what those what those athletes are able to do. I, I know I would uh, poop out after the first uh, the first uh, exercise or routine out there. But anyways, you wanted to take a look at uh, Hylian. I don't know if that's how you uh, pronounce it. Hylian Holdings. That's H- a, that's H- the way I Yeah. It, it, I'm long. This it put it as low back in May. Yes. And then I know it did uh, finally got the crossover on the OUL. I think it's, it should have done that test, you know, of that. Yes. And then I just kind of wanting to go through the normal routine of, you know, on the day, the weekly and monthly, what levels to be looking both directions. Sure. Okay. So when we take a look at this, uh, we're like, we're, uh, let me make sure I'm on the right screen. Am I? Nope, I'm not. We're going to switch screens out here. So uh, we'll take a look at the white background screens because they really tell the story that each of us want to know. When I say tell the story, if we look at the very right hand side, we have the monthly time frame. And what you'll see out there, folks, is you will see a TD nine count bottom pattern. So on a monthly time frame, you've got a nice bottom. So Brent, this says that over time, price should make its way up to the top of its monthly profile. So 517 becomes a price target, especially as we walk through this. So we look at the weekly time frame chart. This formed a Rhodes momentum indicator and wave number seven bottom. It did that the week of May 13th. Price is already above the top of its profile out there. So what that really does, that sets up an A to B equals CD pattern. Now, I'm just simply going to draw that pattern in on my black background chart so just so I can provide to you. At least I'm going to try to do that. There we go. Uh, just so I can pro- provide to you some of those A to B equals CD targets. We're already above the one to one level. So the next area, and this says that the next, what price should do then, Brent, is then target 484. Above that would be the 1.618 C to D extension. And that would take us to 532. So that would uh, say you need to clear the 517 area. So short of some type of weekly bearish reversal candle, price should continue higher and should target those next levels out there. Any questions about the weekly or the monthly chart before we move on to the daily? Oh, that's great, Steve. That's what I was looking for. Okay, perfect. So now on the daily time frame, what's the daily time frame telling us? Well, the daily time frame, if we look at the bottom out here, uh, wave number seven bottom, that was uh, specifically on May the uh, 12th out there, was confirmed on the very next session. We can see A to B equals CD patterns here. What's missing is any kind of bearish reversal candle. And right now, price is just dealing with natural sellers that are at the top of that daily profile. And Brent, that's at $4.62. Now, you have natural buyers at the bottom of the profile, and that was tested earlier this morning. And that's at $4.35. If you did get a close below four thirty-five, then we'll be looking at a, some kind of retracement. We don't have that just yet, but that's your support. 462 is resistance. Whichever side uh, fails tells us the uh, next uh, type of direction. Now, if the downside fails, where is price likely headed to? I would say more likely than not, it would target the top of that weekly profile, 371. It could get all the way down to target 330. But I think 371 would be the level I'd be looking at if price were to close below the bottom of that daily bullish structured profile at 435. So does that does that provide you with the information that you're looking for? Yeah, very much so, Steve. I appreciate it. Perfect. So it looks like 517 is in the uh, cards out here over the long haul, unless we see uh, some other kind of failure out there. So, Brent, is there is there anything else that I can do for you? I think that's it. I was just going to tell you that it was a pretty crazy thing. My youngest son's always been... I don't know. Just never had any fear of, of doing even as a young child, you know, just Very cool. doing kind Very of crazy cool. stuff. And he sent me this video when he was in college that he, I don't know if you know what a slack line is. It's kind of like a almost like a tight rope. OK, but they can they string across to easier like two trees or some support. Yes. And it's a flatter. It's only probably like about maybe an inch or so wide. 
and you just you walk across it. You know, it's good oh, you for your do. balance. And then, <laughs> so he had done that all the way to the end, and then he did a backflip off the thing when he was oh, done. Oh <laughs> man, oh that's cool. That's very cool. Well, for me, we would have needed the medics out there after stuff. Yeah, exactly. Me too, Steve. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Brett, have good to talk weekend, to you, Steve. Thank you, you so too. much. You too. Steve Rhodes with TF, and that was Brent and Martinez, California. We'll be back in just a few. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. We've got the uh, Dow up 210, S&P's up 36, NASDAQ 100, 150, Russell's up 26. Trannies are still off just a tad, uh, about uh, eight points, so they're basically flat out there. We're going to go take a look at the energy sector to finish out the uh, show out here. This is for Hector and Patty. They are fuel injectors. Now, Hector's specific question is, is the uh, XLE on a weekly A to B equals CD to the upside? And the answer is, it, it certainly is, it, it could turn into something like that. Um, I mean, there's already one that uh, has played out. Uh, but is there a second one that's forming? Hector, we won't know that unless price takes out that high from the week of June the 10th out there. Um, so, you know, I know you're asking, was this basically, I think what you're saying is, was this a C point uh, back in July of an A to B equal C to the upside? I don't know the answer to that question. Here's what I do know the answers to, though. The daily time frame. The XLE generated a TD nine count top. They did it on July 29th. That led to a uh, retracement back to support. That was the bottom of the profile and its breakout level support at 69.66. Price is back inside that profile. 
Price is consolidating with inside that profile right now. So your support and resistance zone for the XLE supports at 72.32. Resistance 77.87. Uh, we are trading at 77.41. So you've got a little consolidation on the daily time frame chart out there. Now, the daily could form a new A to B equals CDT upside. And uh, that would require price to close above that TD9 count top. That TD9 count high is 78.66. The volume on that trading day, which was July 29th, Hector, had volume of 25 million shares. You closed inside that yesterday with 30 million shares. So price is pushing into that swing point with volume. That would be the next A to B equal CD that I would be looking at. Now, price has to take out that high. But if it does that, then that A to B equal CD pattern would look like this with a price projection, the one-to-one -one, taking you into about the $84 level. But to answer your question on a weekly, you're also consolidating with inside the weekly profile out there. So uh, no weekly A to B equals CD. Hector and Patty, have a wonderful weekend. Everybody else, you do the same. Be safe out there. And we'll see you on Magnificent Monday. Thanks for joining me here this week at this new hour. It's been great. Hope it's been good for you, too. Again, we'll see you on Monday. Take care.